Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Mist and Fury, written by Sarah J. Moss, read by yours truly, Riwana, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Last chapter, I think Fyra is slowly realizing that she's, you know, not just her human family, but she now has... A little Fey family, you know, they've only been trying to tell her that for 50, 52 chapters at this point, almost. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she's realizing now she needed some time to herself. And, you know, I'm a little jealous. I need a little magic mountain cottage like that. I think we could all use one like that. But otherwise, let's get back into chapter 53. More stayed overnight even going so far as to paint some rudimentary stick figures on the wall beside the storeroom door. Three females with absurdly long, flowing hair that all resembled hers, and three winged males who she somehow managed to make look puffed up on their own sense of importance. I laughed every time I saw it. She left after breakfast, having to walk out to where their no-winnowing shield ended, and I waved to her distant shivering figure before she vanished into nothing. I stared across the glittering white expanse, thawed enough that bald patches peppered it, revealing bits of winter white grass reaching toward the blue sky and mountains. I knew summer had to eventually reach even this melting dreamland, for I had found fishing poles and sporting equipment that suggested warm weather usage. But it was hard to imagine snow and ice becoming soft grass and wildflowers. Brief as a glimmering spindrift, I saw myself there, running through the meadow and slumbered beneath the thin crust of snow, splashing through the little streams already littering the floor, feasting on fat summer berries as the sun set over the mountains. And then I would go home to Valars, where I would finally walk through the artist's quarter, and enter those shops and galleries and learn what they knew. And maybe, maybe one day I would open my own shop. Not to sell my work, but to teach others. Maybe teach the others who were like me, broken in places and were trying to find it, trying to learn who they were around the dark and pain. And I would go home at the end of every day exhausted, but content, fulfilled, happy. I'd go home every day to the townhouse to my friends, chock full of stories of their own days, and we'd sit around the table and eat together. And Rysand. Rysand. He would be there. He'd give me the money to open my own shop, and because I wouldn't charge anyone, I'd sell my paintings to pay him back. Because I would pay him back, made or no. And he'd be there during the summer, flying over the meadow, Chasing me across the little streams and up the sloped grassy mountains. He would sit with me under the stars, feeding me fat summer berries. And he would be at that table in the townhouse, roaring with laughter. Never again cold and cruel and solemn. Never again anyone's slave or whore. And at night, at night we'd go upstairs together. And he would whisper stories of his adventures. And I'd whisper about my day and... There it was. Future. The future I saw for myself, bright as the sunrise over the Sidra. A direction and a goal and an invitation to see what else immortality might offer me. It did not seem so listless, so empty anymore. And I would fight until my last breath to attain it, to defend it. So I knew what I had to do. Five days passed, and I painted every room in the cottage. More had winnowed in extra paint before she'd left, along with more food than I could possibly eat. But after five days, I was sick of my own thoughts for company. Sick of waiting, sick of the thawing, dripping snow. Thankfully, more returned that night, banging on the door, thunderous and impatient. I'd taken a bath an hour before, scrubbing off paint in places I hadn't even known it was possible to smear it. My hair was still drying as I flung open the door to the blast of cool air. But more 
wasn't leaning against the threshold. And that, my friends, quick as it came, was the end. Chapter 53. Well, looky there, looky there. It only took, it only took five days of quiet solitude to come up what, with most of us, would have thought of in, like, a day, maybe, of, you know, being away. I don't know. <laughs> I'm back, back on my salt train, sort of. I'm looking, I'm not trying to spoil chapter 54, but I am looking at it right now. And, uh, yeah, just, yeah, I think you're going to be, you're going to want to be here for that one. See y'all, make sure to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and we will see you in the next chapter.